terminology for derivatives and hedge accounting. Now, what is a derivative financial instrument? It is a financial instrument that derives its value from another instrument's value. These are derivatives. That's a very broad term. A derivative can be any sort of swap, a future, forward, put, call. You don't need to know what those are yet, but it's a piece of paper. Think of a derivative as a piece of paper. That's all these are. It's a piece of paper that doesn't have value unless something else gives it value. So let's think about that. Your house has value inherently because it can have people in it, right? You can have people living in it. Um, a gold bar has value because, oh, I mean, you know, it's pretty and I guess there are you know, uses for it and jewelry and all that. Uh, what else has value? You know, food has inherent value. Now, if I have an agreement, let's say, let's say I signed a contract with you that says you're going to give me bars of gold, you're going to give me food, then that piece of paper, that contract is a derivative. That is what it is. So it derives its value from the valuable assets. Now, the actual specific descriptions and, and criteria for it, it needs to have one underlying and one notional amount or payment provisions or both. What does that mean? Well, it needs to have an underlying. So you'll see questions about what does it need? It needs both of these. An underlying is basically the value of the asset tied to the piece of paper, right? So this is, let's say, a gold bar. That's the underlying. And then the notional amount, well, the notional amount is the amount that the bar of gold is worth. So that could be, you know, let's say, I don't know what it's worth, $100 or, you know, what is that? Say five, $5, I don't know, whatever it is, doesn't matter. So that is a derivative. Now, maybe this contract says if the value of this bar of gold, bar of gold goes down, then the value of this piece of paper goes up. No initial net investment required or one that is smaller than ones for similar contracts. So no initial, this one is less important, but it's still a factor. So basically you don't need to invest in the actual underlying. You just, it has an underlying. You just need to buy this piece of paper or write this piece of paper, right? Like you can be the contract writer and there's no investment, right? There's no investment in that. If someone else agrees to it, you don't, a lot of times there will be an investment, right? Like you need to pay a premium to create or to pay for this contract, but technically you don't need a net investment. Terms require permit a net settlement. So this is important, right? Because what if this contract allows you to purchase these bars of gold at a certain price? Maybe you don't want to do that. You don't want to buy all of these bars of gold because you just personally don't want the gold. You just wanted to bet on the value of gold or similarly with oil, right? Lots of barrels of oil. You don't want to have to deal with that, but you were just betting on it because maybe you want to make money or maybe you just want to lock in the price of something. So you can settle for cash in lieu of or instead of physical delivery or readily settled net outside the contract on exchange. So you can sell this contract actually to someone else who maybe does want to buy the gold or the oil or delivery of an asset giving the same results. So assets convertible to cash, you know, maybe instead of the gold, you want to get a bunch of euros, right? Or some sort of rare coins, something else instead. Basically, super flexible. All the terms of it are going to be agreed upon beforehand, but these are this is what makes a derivative a derivative. It's a piece of paper that gives you a lot more value because there's so much flexibility as compared to just buying bars of gold or barrels of oil. Remember that derivative is just a piece of paper. Now, the underlying this is what we talked about before, a specified price. So maybe the contract that I signed with you says, okay, I get a payout if the price of oil goes above $60 a barrel, there's a rate or other variable, or maybe you know I get a payout or you get a payout if interest rates drop below a certain rate, something like that, including scheduled event that may or may not occur. Meaning you can, these are all like bets, right? Technically they're all bets. Now, they're not necessarily risky bets. Like these could be used to hedge and we'll see what that is. These could be used to lock in the price of something. Or if you think something's going to happen in the world, these are great options for you. They're not always used for risky bets and just to make a lot of money. So there's a value or settlement amount, the amount determined by arithmetic interaction of the notional amount and the underlying. 
So this is the value of the contract. This is the value of that piece of paper. Uh, shares of stock times price per share. This is the value of what you are purchasing. The payment provision we talked about, fixed or determinable settlement made if the underlying behaves in a specified way. So again, if the price of oil goes above $60 a barrel, then I get paid out $1,000. Because as an airline, I want to hedge. You know, I'm not trying to, as an airline, I'm not trying to make money from the price of oil going up and down. I just want to lock it in, right? Because oil is expensive, fuel is expensive. I want to lock in that price. So I will get a payout of $1,000 if it goes above that price, which I will then use to buy the more expensive oil. So th that, that should make it pretty clear. You're getting a payout. It's like insurance. You're basically paying for insurance that if the price of something gets too expensive, you get paid out by someone else. And the other party, why are they doing it? Well, because they think the price is going to go down. So it's two opposing parties with opposing views on some event that's going to happen. You hedge use of a derivative to offset anticipated losses or reduce earnings volatility. When effective, change in value of the derivative offsets change in value of the hedged item or the cash flows of the hedged item. Again, perfect example is with transportation. You want to hedge your fuel prices so that you don't get stuck with a crazy high fuel bill.